when we hear the word flower, what we think of is these brightly colored petals, right? But the flower as we know is the reproductive organ of a plant and the petals aren't quite the reproductive parts of the flower. The reproductive parts as we know are the andresium and the gynesium. In this video, we are going to take a look at the andresium and the gynesium and see how they are arranged differently in different types of flowers. So the andresium, it consists of stamens and the stamens sometimes are attached to petals. This is a simplified diagram of a flower where this is a sepal, this is a petal and this here is a stamen. So as you can see, the yellow stamen here, it's attached to this petal. So whenever stamens are attached to petals, they are said to be epipetalous stamens. Then in other flowers, the stamens are attached to the perianth. Now what is this perianth? So in some flowers like the tulips over here, what you see the pink colored ones over here, they're actually not petals. Why don't we call them petals? Because there is no separate petal and sepal in these flowers. See if you look carefully, there are no green sepals at the base of the flower like you would expect them to be, right? So there are no sepals, there are no petals, there is just one thing instead of the two of them and those are called tepals. So the tepals together constitute the perianth just as the petals together in other flowers constitute the corolla. Similarly, tepals together form the perianth. So in some flowers, the stamens are attached to the perianth or the tepals and these stamens are called epiphyllus. Of course, not in all flowers, stamens are attached to something or the other. In some flowers, the stamens are completely free. This right here is neither epipetalous nor epiphyllous. So this classification was about whether stamens are attached to petals or tepals or not. Another variety that is found in stamens in different flowers is how they are bunched together or whether they are bunched together or not. So now we will see how stamens are bundled together. In many flowers, the stamens are all bundled together to form one bunch. For example, in our very well-known flower, hibiscus, you see all the stamens are bundled together here. You'll ask me that, you know, all these yellow things, they are free, they're separate. So why am I calling them bundled? Well, it's only the anthers that are free. If you remember, the stamens are made of filaments and anthers. The anthers are the parts at the top which have the pollen grains in them, the yellow parts. Those are free, yes, but they belong to filaments which are there at the base. And the filaments, you can't see separate filaments for any of the anthers. So all the filaments are all bundled together in one tube. Hence, we call them monadelphus. Monadelphus, mono means one and delphus stands for the bundling. So these are called monadelphus stamens. And if there are two bunches, then they will be called diadelphus. So you see here in this flower right in the middle, this is not the andresium, this is the gynesium. But on either side of it, you can see the stamens. Here there is one bundle and here there is another bundle. Actually, it consists of only one stamen, but it, it's separate. It's not together with the other bundles. So we say that it has two bundles and the term given to it is diadelphus. And when there are even more bundles, like in this flower, you see there is one bundle here, one here, one here, one here. We call them polyadelphus stamens. And not in all flowers are stamens bundled together. For example, in this flower, all of the stamens, you see all of these stamens are free from each other. And the term for that is polyandrisium. 
polyandrous. Poly means many, androus stands for stamens. So polyandrous means all the stamens are free from each other. They are not bundled together. So this was all about stamens. Now let's take a look at the gynesium. The gynesium is the female part of the flower and it's also called pistil. And the pistil, as you know, is made up of carpels. Now, the gynesium of a flower can have one carpel or many carpels. When it has many carpels, in some flowers, the carpels are not joined. They are free from each other, like you can see in this flower. So these right here, the outer tube-like structures, the ones that are more colorful, the pink and yellow ones, those are the stamens. We're not looking at them. We are looking at the ones at the center, the pink ones or the purple ones. So these are each of these tubes at the center. Each of them is a separate carpel. And we call such a gynesium apocarpus. Apo means separate. They are away from each other or separate from each other. That is why they are called apocarpus. The opposite of that is, of course, when the carpels are all joined together. For example, in this flower, these right here are the stamens and this is the gynesium. And you see how they are all joined together. You can make out the separate carpels here. Each of them, you can see these ridges. They are actually the separate carpels. But they are all fused together to form one gynesium. And this type of gynesium is called sine carpus. Sine means together, so sine carpus. To summarize, we have looked at how the andresium can be attached to petals or tepals and are called epipetalus or epiphyllus, how they can be bunched together into one bundle called monodelphus or two bundles diadelphus or many bundles when they are called polyadelphus or they're not bundled at all, they're completely separate and are called polyandrous. And in gynesium, they can all be separate and are called apocarpus, or the carpels can be fused together and are called sine carpus.